Hello, everybody, and welcome to Eliminated, a Royal Rumble podcast, where we take a look at the inconsistencies of the Royal Rumble match. Jim, we have made it to 2020, and, uh, well, 2020 has been an interesting year so far. I mean, it's been a disaster, but yeah. health-wise, at least. So listen, everyone, we're going to be very real with you right now. The date of this recording is on March 15th. And while this recording is going on, the, we are experiencing the coronavirus outbreak. Um, mm-hmm. In regards to our podcast, st- we, we, we haven't even aired Royal Rumble 2015 yet. But all those episodes were in the can. The thing is, I don't know how much worse things are going to get here in the United States or worldwide for that matter. And I talked to Bill, and he, he's not as in in an as affected area. I myself am. I am in New Jersey and work in New York. And as of this recording, which again is on March 15th, I am going to be going into work all week next week, or to, sorry, tomorrow. And New York currently is the one with the most cases um so i'm not saying that i'm going to have it or i even have the virus but i also don't want to risk it and wait another week and then we can't do anything i am Mm -hmm. aware that wrestlemania as of this recording we have no idea what's going on with it so we are recording this episode and the men's royal rumble back to back today march 15th and as far as the path of the winners, that might be its own episode. Or, for all I know, the Men's Royal Rumble could be the last one in a long time. Regardless, we are going to do this. Uh, we're probably going to be a lot of ta- off on a lot of times. A lot of things certainly could have changed between now and May. And we're just going to continue. Now, Bill, we do have a guest for this episode. Yes, we do. Uh, She is a writer for many blogs, and she'll let you talk, or you'll get to hear what she's worked on in just a moment. So let's welcome in Sarah Hirsch. Hi, guys. How's it going? Hey, Sarah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you follow pro wrestling for and all that good stuff? Okay. Well, um, well, this year uh, marks 25 years I've been a wrestling fan. I discovered... Uh, wrestling in 1995. I watched a tape of, yeah, back then it was videotape. We had a videotape recording of the Royal Rumble 1995. And as soon as I saw Shawn Michaels, I was like, who is that? (laughs) (laughs) But I kind of got hooked onto it. And from there, um, everything, you know, I got really into it. I was very um, notorious for being a huge wrestling fan throughout high school and all that. Um, then I got, I started writing about four years, uh, well, four years ago. Um, I got my start writing for the Camel Clutch blog. And from there, I have written for such sites like Sports Kita, Daily DDT, um, Currently, I write for the Floor Seat, which is via the Sports Daily. Um, I write for e wrestling news. Um, the Chair Shot actually moved to e wrestling news recently, um, so I have written for them as well, and I write for Deventer as well. All right, very good. So, here's something to kind of lighten the mood of. Since, like I said, I was talking about this virus, and I'm sure it's on. Who knows? It might still be on everyone's mind when this is coming on. I got a question for you too. You know, you've seen the different things of, like, washing your hands for 20 seconds, right? Like, some people put songs to it, like, Mm -hmm. how long? Tell me, both of you, if if you've done it, what songs have you used? (laughs) I haven't, actually. So you just count? You just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah, in my mind. Like, I don't say it out loud. Oh, I'm disappointed. I figured you, of all people, would have sang a song. <laughs> Maybe I will have today. What about you, Sarah? 
I actually saw a post on Facebook a few days ago from the Backstreet Boys, and they had actually posted like a 20 second chorus, their 20 second choruses to certain songs. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I couldn't help but think of that, but at the same time, I kind of I kind of did that to like count in my head and. Uh. I used to work in a hotel, so hand sanitizer, like, is my best friend. I keep some in my purse. I have some at home. I have some in my desk. This, 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 this. So, um, and just being really aware of everything and just trying to kind of keep a hold on it is what pretty much everybody's doing. Right, right. Well, I sang a song, and I don't think anyone can even – guess my maybe bill can i don't think a regular person could probably guess my song i'm gonna i'll give you a little bit of it right now and for those that want to um take a crack at it at home so the other day i started washing my hands and i was like i wake up every morning can't wait to embrace the day i take my coffee by the pool I oh. pass my picket fence and gaze across my new oh. lawn. I never knew my life could be this good. I've got a brand new car. I pull it to my country club. It's in my gated neighborhood. All right, do either of you know what song that is? Bill Mott. That, that sounds no. familiar. Oh, God. I, I can't. Oh. All right, here we go. You're not going to believe this. And I know the character's terrible, but I still think the song's great. The theme song to Kerwin White. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is great, man. Yes. <laughs> so that was uh, one of them. Now, though, it, now, though, God, I don't think... God, yeah. Didn't that get used for Michael Cole later? No, I think it... absolutely not. It didn't? I, I would have noticed that. Okay. No, he used the, Michael Cole used the um, the Jim Russ like knockoff song. Oh, okay. Like his instead of like the Boomer Sooner song, it was like some weird knockoff song to make fun of Jim Ross. Okay. Sarah, are you going to say something about Kerwin White? I, I yeah, I was I um I was like I don't think I've heard this song before, but apparently I have so. If I ever come across it again, I'm gonna have to remember this. <laughs> like, you yeah, know, that one time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was washing my hands the other day. Just, like, and I'm pretty sure that was definitely 20 seconds. So, yeah, probably even be. more than that. Probably like 30. Right. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> like I said, but now after last night, they added Frozen 2 on Disney Plus. So now I'm kind of like have that into the unknown song stuck in my head. That That's might actually. Be my... Yeah, it's actually not that bad of a song. I saw that at the movie theater. I, I didn't mind Frozen 2, I, actually. I liked it better than Frozen 1. And I I have, to, I have to agree with you, and I hated Frozen 1. Well, then that's not really saying much then, Bill. No, I know. But... And I will say this, Into the Unknown, better than Let It Go. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Uh, Sarah, where are you still on this Frozen discussion before the Royal Rumble? Uh, well, uh, I'm one of the very few that probably has not seen it. <laughs> oh, wait, which one? Both or just two? I haven't seen either. Wow. You're, you're, you're lucky. Oh, no, Into the Unknown is great, and Frozen 2 well, is I have better 12 than Frozen 1. Nephew, and thankfully he's not into that um however i'm toy storied out for probably the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> which well, one's your favorite toy story uh man um i definitely i think um i think the third one was my favorite i haven't seen the fourth one but the third one i kind of liked how they did as andy grew up and then they then the toys ended up going to i think Bonnie was her name. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it kind of, you know, obviously there's a Toy Story 4 now. So, it, you know, so I kind of like how they were able to kind of keep the story going, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was sad, but it was happy at the same time. You know, they had a new lease on life. For sure, Toy Story 4 for me was my least favorite one. And I think Toy Story 3 was my favorite. Speaking of threes... This is the third Women's Royal Rumble match. That's right. Very good segue. Now, 
First, we talk about what's going on during this time in pro wrestling, but I think since this is the Women's Royal Rumble match, let's just focus on what women were doing in the other promotions as well, Bill. Okay, we can do that. So we're going to start with the women of WWE. And going into this event, the current Raw champion is Becky Lynch. The current SmackDown women's champion is Bayley. Now we're going to welcome in a new promotion into the fold. All Elite Wrestling yes. is finally in. And their champion at the time is Riho. Mm-hmm. The knockouts champion for impact is jordan grace however that title change does not air on tv for a few more weeks and ring of honor is in a very peculiar situation because the current champion that they had which was kelly klein she ended up leaving ring of honor in this scandal well i i guess you could say it's a scandal because I'll give the short version. Please, because I don't think I even know this. Okay, so Joey Mercury went on this Twitter rant about how Ring of Honor is a terrible place to work at, blah, 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 blah. And he was supporting Kelly Klein to get like a new contract, you know, get better and all that. Mm-hmm. Well, what we didn't know is that Kelly Klein cheated on her husband which was former ring of honor wrestler bj whitmer with joey mercury Hmm. oh my so because of that the women of honor title is gone it's done and they are creating a new women's title calling it the ring of honor world women's title um as of this recording the tournament has not even started yet but it will be going on Probably by the time you guys are listening to this. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to, uh, Sarah, do you want to chime in on anything that Bill said in regards to what's going on with women in the other promotions? I think he pretty much has it co- covered. I'm pretty stunned about the Ring of Honor thing. Um, I heard a little bit about it, but I didn't know the other stuff. So I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I'm just trying to process that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so then we talk about usually the um, leading into the Women's Royal Rumble, if there are any segments or pre-interview things. And I can only find one, which was a little segment that had Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville talking, Mm -hmm. and that Sonya said that she would let Mandy win if it came down to both of them. Did Mm -hmm. I miss any that maybe one of you two No, I don't believe so. I mean, the Women's Rumble was fairly early in the show, if I remember yeah. cool. so It really was. There's not that much that happened between then and when it started. Right. Um, Considering what actually happened at the Rumble, um, you know, with Edge's return and things like that, um, that was probably why they had the Women's Rumble first. Because mm-hmm. if they would have did the Men's Rumble first and all that was going on, I, yeah. I think... I think the crowd would have probably been a little exhausted and maybe a bit underwhelmed. Yeah. Well, like I said, next episode, me and Bill will discuss the men's Royal Rumble. Um, this is the women's, though. We have 90-second intervals. So, Bill, what does that mean for us? It's going to mean every seven and a half minutes. Right. Now, the announcers are Tom Phillips, Corey Graves, and Jerry Lawler. And before we uh, start talking about the Rumble match, do either of you two have anything to add? No, not really. I think Shayna Baszler should have won, but I'm biased. <laughs> All right, well, well, we can talk about that when that when that comes yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so Bill, let's start this off. Start that clock. All right, let's go. Entries one through five. One, Alexa Bliss. Two, Bianca Belair. Three, Mighty Molly. Four, Nikki Cross. And five, Lana. And I have, during this segment, eliminated no one. And we start the discussion off with Sarah. All right. Um, uh, Bianca Belair, um, as we all know, she had she was the Rumble MVP for mm-hmm. this year. Um, she lasted over 30 minutes, 
and I love with her. So, um, when you pl- what? Sometimes when you watch the Rumble again, you kind of notice different things that you may not have made a connection to in the first place. I love how with these first two, um, at one point during the match, um, it ended up as them two again, and base. Um, and both of them too um, what they have in common is uh, ring awareness and for Bianca to have eliminated Bliss the way she did um, by taking advantage of her braid and the ring awareness I thought that was really well done um, so with with that that was very good and Mighty Molly was definitely a big surprise I, I popped for that big time I loved Molly, Mighty Molly. Um, growing up, I thought it was I thought it was awesome. I loved how she had the you know hurricane music and all that, and and two, um, you know Nikki Cross. Um, she came to Bliss's aid when she needed her the most, and um, with Lana, I think she was the only one. Mate, I think so that. She cut a promo on the way to the ring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, for me, in terms of Lana, um, I really think that perhaps she's underrated on the mic. I always enjoyed her mic work, and, boy, she got some major heat, especially during that time with the whole Bobby Lashley thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so a couple of things I noticed right off the bat. Number one, WWE's back to using these horrible graphics that I hate so much. Like, oh, me you've too. noticed it on the Alexa Bliss one right off the bat, and I'm like, oh, I hate these. What, whatever they, they call it. I don't even know what the what the word is. Um, right. But at one point, well, first off, then I wrote down, how long is Bianca's hair? <laughs> then one of the announcers says, where's the hurricane at? Yep. And then another <laughs> one of them says, I don't think he can be in this match. And I said, I wrote down in my notes here, why not? Women can enter the men's rumble. It just happened last year. With, That's true. Uh, not Nia Jax or whatnot. Um, and I'm going to go back to that later on when we get to another segment, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I hate the Alexa Nikki team. I don't know why something annoys me about them, like New Day annoying. And I don't know what it is. And then my final note here is Lana, and then in parentheses, it says greatest WWE superstar, question mark. Did she say something about calling herself the yeah. WWE? Yeah. Okay, that's what she said. Word. Okay. She said that she is the greatest superstar in WWE. Oh, she that- never <laughs> says WWE. She just says WWE. I noticed that last night. I went, um, so she's going to win the WWE <laughs> Rumble. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I do actually have greatest WWE superstar, and I thought that I missed the E. No, nope, my notes. So, did it. Okay, so I was right. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, so I, I anyone I you know I'm not a big fan of Alexa Bliss. I I don't I just think like to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of that many women in the WWE. I I do think that there's not as many good women's wrestlers in the WWE as they would lead you to believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say that I think I would consider Alexa on in the bottom portion for me. And I'm not watching WWE every single week and every show, to be fair. But I always feel like I when I watch an Alexa Bliss match, something seems like it's botched or awkward and it seems consistent with her. And I don't know if that's an ongoing thing that anyone else feels other than me. Um, well, for Alexa, um, she she had been injury. Um, she been having some injuries there for a while. Um, that's why you know she hadn't been um, as active as she usually was. Um, she's uh, what they call, I guess, injury prone. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm like you, um, I think it was Bill that said it, or was it, (laughs) um, 
one of y'all said that you didn't get the Bliss and Cross team. Yeah. I don't either. Um, I keep thinking that somebody's going to turn on the other, and I'm just kind of surprised that that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I mean, it's been going for, by this point, about a year. Mm-hmm. Very surprising. Bill, what do you have for this segment? Um, well, when Mighty, when Mighty Molly came out, I wrote down, Marvel's newest superhero, or <laughs> is it DC? Because you could use her for either one. Um, I've never figured out with Bianca Belair, and, and Sarah, maybe you can help me with this. What okay. does what does EST stand for? I have that in my notes later on, too. You know what? I Even I don't really know that one. Because <laughs> I know it's not. It's, it's one of those things you think about, and then you don't think to look it up. At least for me. Because <laughs> I know it's not Eastern Standard Time, that's for sure. Right. Oh, you took my joke. <laughs> I was going to say, I was trying to say, wait till you hear what I thought it meant later on. But you just said um, but I do have, and yeah, I can't really do this show without mentioning signs yes. on this show. We have two signs within the first segment. Can I, let me just pause you for one second there. Okay. I have a, a note here written sign, and then I have in parentheses I, and I mm-hmm. guess I never finished the note, so I'm wondering if one of those you're about to say is that one. Yes, it is. Okay, go ahead, because I don't remember what it was anymore. I heart the plated boats. <laughs> I saw that. And I'm going to save the other one for the next segment. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, entry 6 through 10, 6, Mercedes Martinez, 7, Liv Morgan, 8, Mandy Rose, 9, Candice LeRae, 10, Sonia Deville. And I have during this segment eliminated Lana, Morgan, Molly, and Martinez. And this time we'll start the discussion off with Bill. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to the other sign real quick. Um, Lana cheats more than the Astros. Wow. That is, <laughs> that is a great sign because it is true. And uh, just to rub it in, you Astros fans, the Washington Nationals won the World Series in Houston. So, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> um when Liv Morgan comes out, does she look like a dominatrix with her outfit? She, I don't know. She kind of does, I think. She does, but she also has a really awkward walk, in my opinion. Yeah, she does. She didn't give off those um, Shaniqua vibes to me. Um, if y'all remember her. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, um, that the whole look for her... Um, I'm really still trying to figure that out myself. And, um, you know, and with Lana and Liv Morgan, that they eliminated each other. You know, they really didn't follow up with that, you know, pri- you know prior to the Rumble. Mm-hmm. The whole wedding and revelation that Liv and Lana had a thing going on. So it kind of was like, um, what was I going to say? Um not a missed opportunity, but a failure to capitalize on that, you know, post Royal Rumble. Yeah. I mean, I think as of right now, I think all four of the people involved in that, I mean, again, recording on March 15th, as of this recording, all four of them, nothing has been made, really. No. No, it's like, it's like, you know, they're complete, it, they have completely disappeared. Like, let's look, look at this. So, first off, Lana apparently is doing some kind of movie. So, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah. Liv pretty much got squashed at Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Rusev is doing nothing. And Lashley... What is Lashley doing? What's the last nothing. thing he did? Nothing. Nothing. So, yeah, like, all four of them, they spent all that time and not one, not, not any of them have gotten any more significance to them. There, there has been no payoff, and at one point, that was, like, the hot topic on Raw because of how ridiculous it was. Mm-hmm. That wedding was ridiculously fun. Yes. <laughs> it was stupid, but it was fun. Yes. 
I got here, Marce- uh, Mercedes is long overdue for a big company. Yes. I'm happy to see yes. it uh, Graves gets horny for Mandy. <laughs> I have the quote. Good. Oh, him and Jerry Lawler. Oh, my God. When she came out, that was funny. I point? remember the first time my dad took me to a Major League Vice baseball stadium. I feel the same way experiencing God's greatest creation with the king. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, Mandy lands on Otis, which was great. And we get an Otis chant. Yeah, that that is. was one of my favorite moments, too. I, I, I love, um, I've been loving their whole um, angle thus far yeah. with her, Otis, and all that. I mean, that's one of the only things that I even like about probably the entire product right and, now. And Corey, and Corey Graves has a great comment that make, make, basically rebounds him from the previous quote where he's like, this is better than John Cusack and say anything. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Otis Sandman <laughs> is better than John Cusack. So, I think sometimes you meet the robots anymore. Just roll out, and roll out, you know, in a random place when a woman is falling. Do what now? I'm sorry. Just roll out, of, you know, just roll out on the ground to a random spot to save a woman. <laughs> I know. Uh, they they play that off really good. I, I oh, wonder how they okay. actually came up like came up with that or you know, that was that was awesome though. I enjoyed that. Sarah, what do you have for uh, for this segment? Um well Af- Mercedes um, Martinez, I was really hoping she would have lasted a lot longer. Um, she only lasted probably a little over eight minutes. Um, but Man- you see Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, they um, they team up a little bit. And, and you know, and you got Candice LeRae in there as well. And this is, I think this is where... Bianca Belair really starts to shine with the eliminations, mm-hmm. and um, and she, um, I think at this point too is where I can't exactly remember what happened, but um, both, um, we'll just, I'll just say fire and desire at this point. Um, they got caught up in their own eliminations where. Um, Sonia Deville accidentally eliminated or accidentally pushed Mandy Rose off. Otis comes in for the save, but it was in vain as uh, Sonia Deville ended up getting eliminated and causing Mandy Rose to be eliminated as well. Bill, how much time do we have in this segment? A minute 35. Okay, so... Out of these five people, Bill, who would you say has the best theme song? Of the five that came out? Correct. I'd ha- you know what? I have to go with Mercedes. I really like that theme. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't remember um, any of them, to be honest with you. So I, like, I was going to say, it's kind of a quick, quick, trick question for you, Bill. Well, it's like, no, because like with Mercedes, you get it. It's that, you know, Latino beat. Mm-hmm. Live, I don't remember. Mandy Rose, all it is is just Mandy. And then, (laughs) yeah, that Candace is like pop punk, maybe like uh, Good Charlotte kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Sonya Deville, that song could be used for anybody, Mm -hmm. which is something Jim and I have done or have said many, many times right. when we used to review pro wrestling albums. They actually came out with more Uncaged. I think uh, maybe you might have to go back to that. I, think. I know. I think, I think we, they're the we did was three. Well, I think they're on, like, what, seven now? No, they're, like, ten or eleven. Really? Yeah. Um, how much time do we have left now, Bill? Eighteen seconds. Eighteen seconds. So, uh, Bill, why don't you tell me, do, do you an impression of Lana? While we go into the uh, the break. Damn it. All right. Uh, so, Lana, I'll let you take this one. Okay. <laughs> Best wrestlers in WW. Me. The others. 11, Kyrie Seed. 12, Mia Yim. 13, Dana Brooke. 
14, Tamina. 15, Dakota Kai. All right, I have eliminated during this segment Cross, Rose, DeVille, Larray, Kyrie from Kingdom Hearts, Tamina, and Yim. We start the discussion off with Sarah. All righty. <clears throat> so this is the part. Um, this is the part where um, Bel Air continues her streak of eliminations, and Bliss got some of her own, and that was where the two ended up back in the ring by themselves. Um, kind of brings you back to the beginning, and that was a good moment. I think I said that earlier. Um, let's see. Kyrie saying. Um, I, I just love her. Um, I didn't think she really had a chance, and she really didn't last that long. That was kind of disappointing. Um, Mia Yim was a nice addition. Uh, I always enjoy her. Um, Dana Brooke is somebody that I'd like to see succeed, but I'm not sure what they want to do with her. Uh, Tamina was one that I think came back from, I want to say, an injury. She's somebody else that is pretty injury prone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Dakota Kai, um, uh, one of my notes I have is that Tegan Knox was in this match later on, and I really think there was a missed opportunity with these two um, in terms of the Royal Rumble and what the Royal Rumble is known for. Mm Mm-hmm. I think one of the dumbest things is the fact that for this year's WrestleMania, WWE has like a pirate logo and a pirate theme. And they Mm -hmm. used to have something that was a pirate that all of a sudden is not a pirate anymore. (laughs) Yep. Dumb. Yeah, they did the pirate thing because of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I'm pretty much banking on that's the reason why they did that. (laughs) Yeah. That's a solid guess. I didn't even think of that. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, I have Alexa pulls Bianca's hair. Uh, here's where I have Belair has EST on her hair, and it stands for Eastern Standard Time, which already <laughs> gave me that took away that joke. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, once <laughs> my other note here is once again I can't tell Alexis and Dana apart. For those that remember. There were two sets of people that I'm like, I don't know, on a casual look, they just look the same to me. And that's Alexa and Dana Brooke. And for those that don't remember, I think this was on the uh, the greatest Royal Rumble discussion we've had, um, mm-hmm. which you can listen to in the archives. Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin. Yeah. Like, on a first look, I'm like, nope, they look pretty much the same to me. And <laughs> seeing Alexa and Dana Brooke fight, I feel justified that thought. Um, and then my last note here, Bill, is ta me no. remember that. What? I remember that theme. Maybe, maybe I should use that for 20 seconds when I wash my hands. It should. You're just gonna go ta me no like 10 times. Yes. <laughs> kind of gotta do your like head from side to side like ta me no. Uh, uh. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. See. Gave me a new strategy. Bill, what do you have for this segment? Um, well, when Kyrie comes in, she has her umbrella and she jumps off the rope. And I wrote down, Japanese Mary Poppins? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Um, and then I, I wrote this down because it's a little rib to Jim and he knows why. I almost interviewed Mia Yim. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll give the quick version. Yeah, please. So, we did a show called Sunday Morning Buffet many years ago. And we interviewed anybody. Didn't matter what form of entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, we had Mia Yim scheduled. And originally, I was going to do the interview with Mia Yim. Mm -hmm. Jim calls me and he's like, hey, uh, do you mind if I do this interview? She's really big in The Walking Dead. And uh, we can talk about that. (laughs) I was like, Sure, okay. Not realizing how... I mean, I knew Mia Yim was good, but I, I didn't realize she'd make it all the way to NXT, so... And I might um, be wrong. That might have, we might have been talking about... I might have talked to her about... Uh, I think that might have been after the Sophia reveal for those that watch uh, The Walking Dead. Ah, so that, okay. Which was, which was a big moment in I that show. That was a while yeah. ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you hear Otis talking, because he's still out there. 
And I wrote, is that Otis or Captain Lou Albano talking? Because <laughs> it's sort of a little bit, like, if you listen, like, very carefully, there's, like, a very tiny bit that sounds like Captain Lou. But I do have to ask the question, the, the daring question, which is one of my last notes for this segment. And Sarah will know what I'm talking about. Has Dana Brooke had her date with Batista yet? Oh, <laughs> dang, I forgot about that. <laughs> Jim's like, what the hell are you talking about? Well, I vaguely <laughs> know about this. Okay, so... Apparently they were, they were both horny for each other or something like that. Well, well, okay, so Batista posted on Twitter that he... That this was months ago, actually. That he had broken up with his girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And Dana Brooke is one of those who's trying to find love and be married. And she is like, huh, I wouldn't mind going out with Batista. And Batista and her, they start doing like a public Twitter, like talking. It's almost like eHarmony, Tinder, all that on Twitter. And it's like, I wouldn't mind going out on a date with you. And Dana is like super excited about that. They blatantly like just flirted with each other on open Twitter and it was yes. like, hey, if it's if it was that steamy, do, do we even want to know what the DMs were if they even did that? <laughs> That's the part I'm afraid of. I'm is how... <laughs> so I do wonder if that date ever happened or if it was going to happen during WrestleMania weekend. Mm. Well, you said that it sounded like it was a while ago. So like... I don't know. I feel like a decision would have been made already if yeah, I go on a really, date. Yeah, I really do. I don't know. Can we keep tabs on Batista and Dana Brooks' um, social media accounts in the future? I I, I think we can. So mm -hmm. let's. Well, I mean, I say that, but I mean, the next time we'll probably actually maybe really record an episode might be until May. Again, today's March fifteenth. Sixteen through twenty. Sixteen Chelsea Green. Seventeen Charlotte Flair. Eighteen Naomi. Nineteen Beth Phoenix. Twenty Tony Storm. I have during this segment eliminated Kai, Chelsea, Dana, Bliss, and Bel Air. I'm going to start the discussion off for this segment, and I'm going to start off with Lawler picks Charlotte to win, even though more than halfway into the match. Mm hmm. I don't like Naomi's new hairstyle for this. Oh. Corey brings up Beth entering the men's rumble. I go mm -hmm. back to why can't the hurricane enter? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Storm. All I could think of is after seeing her was Avril Lavigne skater boy. Oh yeah. Okay. That's, that's pretty much what I got. Sarah, what do you have for this? Uh, let's see. Um, I put Naomi returned from injury. Um, she had a elim uh, she had a defying elimination spot um, that act that actually had bought her some time during the um, during the match. Um, I I liked Naomi's hair. I thought it you know I it looked good on her to me, but. That that was just my opinion. Um, Beth Phoenix um, was the second um, surprise um, blast from the past, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and she, um, I really enjoyed um, her work in this match. Uh, Tony Storm was somebody that I really liked um, through the May Young Classic, and and I think at I, I think she had. Um, she either was the NXT UK champion at the time, or she um, she had just dropped the title. I can't exactly remember that, but they, uh, I do remember the commentators um, mentioning that at one point. Mm -hmm. So you said that, um, Beth Phoenix was the second return. You mean yeah, surprise in terms of like um, legends, okay. or? Yeah, because I was going to say, was Tamina actually not a surprise? <laughs> um, well, yeah, like maybe a return from injury or whatever, but 
Yeah, I didn't I didn't put Tamina on there. I just thought she was injured. And that's but in terms of you know the blast from the past slash legends, there was really only three of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got? Um. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the. This is something I, I think I've said once on my podcast, but I'm gonna talk about it here. And this is with Bianca Belair. I first off, I really like her. I think she's a great wrestler. She's come a long way. Um. She's very talented. Mm-hmm. But why have the hair? That is such a bad... It, it's almost like... And Jim, I'm going to go back to when we did the 92 Rumble. Okay. And IRS was getting pulled by the top. <laughs> right. Why have the hair? The hair cost Bianca the Royal Rumble. She could have won it if she didn't have the hair so long. It's true. You know? I like to interject... And I was really hoping another thing that I, when I had watched it the first time, you know, of course you're into it and everything, I was really hoping for her to use the braid and just like whip Whip. the hell out of Charlotte Flair. I was like, use that braid, girl! (laughs) Turn that ass up! She needs it! (laughs) She's going to be the modern day Willow Smith. She whips her hair back and forth. That's right. (laughs) Uh, then, I'm really surprised she didn't like whip nobody with the braid. You know, now that you're saying that, I am very surprised by that, actually. Yeah. Then um, one of them, I, I don't remember who it was. It was either Corey or Tom Phillips. Mentioned that Beth and Charlotte is a dream match, which if you think about it, it, it kind of is. Mm-hmm. If you think, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, that. not <laughs> everyone's dream match, but I mean... That could be an interesting match. You know, that would be the it. one that, you know, people are like, oh, okay. And then they could potentially steal the show. Because mm-hmm. that's still in excellent shape. Yeah. Even she the can, years that she has done in recent years. She could still go, I think. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I want to point out in this segment is the loud thud sound when Beth's head the back of her head hits the steel post while she's mm. working with bianca because i missed it the first time live when it happened mm-hmm. because it eventually you know causes blood to come out from the back of her head and it was all over her golden hair and when i watched it the second time i noticed that uh, you know initially there's no blood coming out from beth Because Mm -hmm. of Bianca Belair. It's not really until she's in that same corner with Charlotte and they're fighting over the top rope. And that's where I notice that Beth starts to bleed. So maybe the thud spot, that's what I'm going to call it, where Phoenix's head hits the post may have been the initial cause. But it might have been something with Charlotte that eventually makes it to where the blood starts to come out. Aggravated it. Mm-hmm, uh-huh. Exactly. I want to make a quick um, 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 thing here, too. Um, let's see. With these five, um, Ch- Chelsea, Charlotte, Naomi, Beth, Phoenix, and Tony, um, four of these, this is where a lot of uh, the majority of them they're starting to stay in the match longer than five, eight, nine minutes. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to point that interesting fact out. Um, We got, we had Charlotte who won and she was in there 27 minutes. Naomi, 22 minutes. Beth was in there 23 minutes and Tony storm was in there for 18 minutes. Yeah. And Bianca, I don't know if you mentioned her, but she, you know, this is where she gets eliminated. She's in there for 33 minutes. And, yes. Um, I, I did a little cheating. I'm, I'm not going to spoil the men's here, but Bianca has the second longest time of longevity for either men or women. I'm not going to spoil the men's till we do the next episode. So, right. but mm-hmm. for Bianca, you know, she was the top for the women. She was the Iron Woman on this show. Mm-hmm. Didn't. Well, I want to say, didn't Sasha Banks have a long period of time in the first one? Oop. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 
Okay, 21 through 25. 21, Kelly Kelly. 22, Sarah Logan. 23, Natalia. 24, Zaya Lee. 25, Zelina Vega. And I have during this segment eliminated Logan and Kelly. And I think for this segment, we're going to talk about the rest of the card. But anything happen women's wise before this match? For the you card? mean it's. Um... No, because the only other match before this was the uh, Reigns match. Right, and the women's title matches were after this. Well, we'll probably let's let's talk about those real quick. This is where we talk about the rest of the card for this thing. Okay. So. Okay. So we had two pre-show matches. Uh, Sheamus defeated Shorty G, mm-hmm. and and this was actually Sheamus's return match. Okay. From being injured. And well, on well, well, Bill, hold on one second. Let me let you let me correct you there for a second. Let me well, not correct you, but let me let's do it this way because we still have the men's Royal Rumble for the next episode. Okay. Yeah, let's Anything do the women. Anything involving women. Okay, on, we'll do uh, the rest of the yeah. card. Okay. Okay. Well, that that'll be easy. Okay, so Bailey defeated Lacey Evans to retain the SmackDown Women's Title. That mm-hmm. was a bad match. Oh my God, that was. And uh, Becky Lynch defeated Asuka to retain the Raw Women's Championship. So I I found it actually a little interesting that the women's title matches happened after this match. Mm-hmm. That that was very interesting to me. But yeah, because you know in the past too, like I think with the men, you know, they would have their title match. And then when the Rumble happened, they would, like, re-enter, like, go into the Rumble to try again, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Jim came up with a great idea to how to book the Rumble event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's not with, 17 hours long. Yeah. Which I actually agree with him, because the idea is you, you still have the two Rumble matches, but you have one women's title match and one men's title match. So therefore you can only choose the WWE championship or the Brock Lesnar Memorial championship, or <laughs> you can choose to have the SmackDown women's belt or the uh, Roman's belt. And right. that's it. Not, you know what? I'm going to say it right now. Not every fucking title needs to be defended on every damn show. Mm mm. So yeah, do it that way. And there's your fo- the the, re- the my inspiration for this was the 2011 Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. That one had the that was the 40 guys. That was 40, yeah. Right, yeah. and then there were like three matches other than that. I'm like, this is a perfect format. Four yeah. matches. It doesn't feel like it's taking forever. I will say this though, I'm not against one of the Royal Rumbles opening the show. Like have it be one Royal Rumble, then the Men's, the title matches. Yeah, the title matches, and then the last Royal Rumble. And you should base it off like of, like... Fact. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I also like the fact that they could choose any title, um, any title that kind of ups, um, the, ups the guessing factor a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, it's like let's say for, for this one, let's say the Women's Royal Rumble was, you know, before the men's again. So I would have it be Women's Royal Rumble... Second match is the men's title match. Third match is the women's title match. And then the last match is the men's Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, we're probably going to have, like, ten matches for 2021. Yeah. Um, It wasn't as bad as last year, though, because last year I think the men's Royal Rumble started at, like, 11.15 at night. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, How much time do you have left, Bill? We have 3.20 to go. Really? Okay. okay. I want to go ahead and um, jump in here. I just want to say um, I loved Selena Vega's outfit for this uh, match. The When she had came out, I said, man, she is giving off some Zendale vibes from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and when I think it was like a day or two later, she went on Instagram and said that her co- her gear was inspired by Sendell. I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I lived through her because we like the same things. Um, she looks just like Leah. She's a huge fan of her, too. 
does all these video game characters cosplay and all that. I, I just love it. And I just love how she, you know, does stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Continue. I, I, I met, I actually met her at WrestleCon in 2013. Oh, okay. she folks, let me tell you, she is as pretty, you know, on TV as she is in person. She is just the cutest looking woman. Oh my gosh. Mm hmm. But she's so tiny. Oh, my gosh. Even, uh, even when she was Rosita in TNA, yeah. she, I mean, you knew. I was like, yeah, she's got to be in WWE one day. She has got the look. And, you know, I'm just so glad that she's there now. And I I definitely think they have not even gotten close to scratching the this surface is, yeah. with her. I, I joke in my notes, and this is only because I love Zelina Vega. This is her probably only match of the year right here because she does managing most of the time. But every once in a while, they let her wrestle, which right. I like. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to bring up oh, real quick. I got to bring up Jerry's quote about Kelly Kelly. Oh, God. Okay. Go because, ahead. because Jerry Lawler cannot be out perverted by Corey Graves sure. during this match. Absolutely not. <laughs> so he's like, Corey. You told the story about you and your dad going to your first baseball game. I remember the first time I saw Kelly Kelly. I asked for her picture so I could show Santa what I wanted for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of Kelly, I have a question. Mm-hmm. I had heard that she had replaced Sasha Banks. Is that true? And secondly, if it is true, why did Sasha Banks need to be replaced? Um, I don't know as far as that goes, but I think think Sasha was dealing with an injury. Yeah, at the that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. So it, it wasn't like it wasn't like Kelly had a spot. It was just Sasha couldn't go in. Mm-hmm. Actually, um, after the match, I there were two other people that were supposed to be in this match that weren't. And I didn't read this till like the day after the Rumble. You know what? I'm glad, Bill, that we've gone back to the era of where, oh, someone's not in the match, and now we don't know why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> Zia Lee, that's how you say that. Oh. She lasted a lot longer than I thought she would have. All right, now our last group of five. 26, Shotzi Blackheart, 27, Carmella, 28, Keegan Knox, 29, Santina Morella, and 30, Shayna Baszler. Uh, I have, now, this is a segment where we only go to the final four. So this is now going to be discussing everything between now and the final four. Um, okay. Eliminated is Santina, Lee, Tegan, Vega, Shotzi, Carmella, Tony, and Naomi. Um, I was going to say WWE should be calling Zia Lee or Zia Lee, whatever you call her, X to the Lee, just saying. <laughs> um, we're going to start this discussion off with Bill. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is where Naomi has the jump that Sarah mentioned earlier. She barely makes the jump. Like, she's maybe three to six inches away from touching the ground when she has that, like when she makes the jump, Mm -hmm. but that was, she did a very good job. Her spots are becoming very, very good. Um, well, can I say, can I chime in on this for something? Yeah. Cause this Mm -hmm. is going to take us back in, um, sorry, in history of this, um, of this podcast. So, I'm one of these people that I'm tired of the spot. I'm tired mm-hmm. of every year someone doing the spot. And I saw this in social media, people giving a hard t- time to Naomi, but it's not because of Naomi. No, absolutely not. It's the fact that if you look back at the history and in the archives of this show in particular, the first time this like spot was done where like someone does something crazy to get back in the ring was 2010. So we've mm-hmm. seen a, some version of this spot for a decade. Yeah. And that was with John Morrison. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then eventually it was stolen a year later by Kofi Kingston. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then like the other thing about the, 
this Naomi spot was, why does she not think she'll make it? I feel like she's been in like a worse position to jump back in. And then let me throw back again. She's already this far. Why would she even try to jump back and stay out there? Wait till yeah. everyone gets out. Except for the one person that's left. Yeah. Um, also, Corey makes a comment when Carmella does a move about, I, I don't remember who Carmella did this move on, but she was like, he was like, oh, Carmella's giving her a mellow go reel, you know, mellow go reel. And I'm like, Corey, I'm sure you've had a ride on Carmella. Wow. Come on. <laughs> uh, and then when Santina comes out, and I remember this the first time I saw it live, the look on Naomi's face said everything about Santina being in the match. This so, was the one point when that that ha- um, when he came out, I was sitting there like, yeah. There, there's been a few injuries going on. I mean, like, it, I didn't like it, but at the same time, I did because um, the one thing that they mentioned was him eliminating Beth Phoenix at the um, at the uh, WrestleMania at WrestleMania 25 um, for the you know battle royal that they had. So I didn't catch that the first time I watched it, but when I watched it again, I was like. You know what? That was a great throwback. So that that between that and the past history with Santino and Beth Phoenix, I thought that was really good. But at the same time, it really wasn't needed. But I guess for the um, fact that there was a few injuries or whatnot, I you know I guess it worked in that case. Mm-hmm. I was torn on the uh, on that situation only because so when I see Santina come out. I say to myself, like, okay, is this going to be a message of WWE when it comes to trans people? Like, is it gonna, is this where we're going with that? But then I was, and I was like, no, but then I kept contradicting myself in my mind on the message they're trying to send. And then, like, I just concluded that I'm confused and then stopped. And I still don't know if, like, do you think. Because some people th- t- took it as, like, the most <laughs> offensive thing. And then others that counter that are like, it's a joke only, so, you know, you should laugh. And I don't know if I, <laughs> I go either way with that, to be honest with you. What, yeah, you that's, a tough, that's a tough call. Because I know there were people that were upset about this spot. First off, I, now, want, I, do, want, I do want to say I'm not upset because cause if it was supposed to be just Santino... I forgot how they play this off. Like, is is Santina supposed to be a different person than Santino in storyline wise? Yes, his sister. Okay, because I didn't yes. know if it was like, but everyone like. My problem isn't where I think other people's problem is that a guy has would enter the Rumble because again, going back to my Hurricane comment, like just last year, there's a Women's Royal Rumble and fucking Nia Jax is in that, so why can't it go the other way? But mm-hmm. I wasn't sure, like, what they're presenting here. Right. Right. What were you saying, Bill? No, it was like, I, I remember, like, reading online how people were upset just about Santina being in it. Like, some people. And then there were other people that were like, oh, this was a good spot, you know. But I, I never really thought about it until you said it, the whole transgender thing. And I'm honestly not sure if this was something about transgender people or not? I think it's a case of where me and you, at least, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to talk for Sarah because I don't know how she feels yet about it. We're going to go back to you about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a case of me, like, I want it to mean more, but mm-hmm. it doesn't. Yeah. Sarah, your thoughts? I, ha- I have to agree with you guys. I see both sides. Um, I think they just, I think with Santina, um, being in the rumble, I, I just think it kind of was a time filler, if anything else. But it kind of helped out in other places too, in terms of injury and all that. And yeah, and that was probably a statement for the transgender thing as well. So, um, but yeah, I, I see all sides. That it was like the inclusion of Santina kind of, in a lot of ways, kind of helped out in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now. One thing that I definitely know is stupid 
is the name Submission Magician. I feel someone called someone that because I have a note here that says Submission Magician is stupid. I think that's they Baszler. refer to Baszler yeah. as that. Um, they did it a lot in NXT, and I'm pretty sure they do it now on Raw. Um, Baszler was actually my pick to win, and I have to mention the moment between her and Charlotte. If anything about Charlotte, she has really, um, she has really came around in terms of selling a story with her, um, with her facial expressions. Um, but I really enjoyed the moment with her and Baszler because this match between the two of them is coming, whether it is SummerSlam, Survivor Series, hell, maybe next year, Mm -hmm. you know, it's coming. And Royal Rumbles are actually really good at teasing those type of things as well. And, but yeah, um, Baszler was my pick to win, but, um, now, being that today is March 15th, um, I think now it was probably, it would probably be too easy for Baszler to win with what they're trying to do with her now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we're, unless either of you two has done Ed, we're going to the final four now. Nope. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, Tegan Knox came in at number 28, and I did mention earlier that was a missed opportunity with her and Dakota Kai. Mm-hmm. Um, when I when I had watched it live, um, I did not see World Collide before them. So I was initially I was like, oh, what? that was missed opportunity. Da, da, da. Then I found out about the World Collide thing that they got into it. But still, I think. I think they could have did a little something, especially with Knox. Um, she could have entered after Kai and caused her to get eliminated or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But that was just one of those things that kind of was stood out to me because of the fact that their feud is going to be massive in NXT. And I just, you know, I just thought that was weird. That, that really stood out like a sore thumb to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Final four. It's Shayna versus Charlotte versus Natalia versus Beth. Beth eliminates Natalia. Beth versus Shayna versus Charlotte. Shayna eliminates Beth. We're down to Shayna versus Charlotte, and Charlotte wins. All right, what are your guys' thoughts on those final four? I actually like the final four. Um, you know, Nat- Natalia is somebody I feel is underrated as well that. I would definitely love to see her um, reap her reward, you know, get rewarded for her efforts. Um, I really did like the fact that Beth eliminated her. That was shocking to me. That was good. Mm. And I was really hoping there was more between Flair and Baszler, but it wasn't. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it goes back to, with Beth and Natalia, the whole every woman for herself, you know? Right, yeah. And and it comes off good because with, and I think they mentioned it during the match, how Natalia had eliminated Beth in the first Rumble. So it comes... That's a very good point. I missed that. So it comes full circle with this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it goes back to every woman for herself. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, Beth Beth Phoenix put on a great performance in this Rumble as well. Especially after she had lost some blood during the Oh, she was a real trooper, trust me. (laughs) I wrote down when Charlotte won that the fans gave a mixed reaction. Because there were some that cheered for her winning, and there were some that groaned. And you could tell. You could You know, um... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was pretty pissed. Um, I like Charlotte. Charlotte has worked very hard, has improved. I mean, she is, you know, she's very talented, very great and all that. I'm not discounting that at all. Um, But Charlotte, I felt like Charlotte didn't need this win. And for, you know, because one, well, before, you know, the whole thing with um, Rhea Ripley now, Charlotte, you know, for her to win, at first everybody's like, "Oh, great, another Charlotte versus Becky." Even though, you know, her and Becky have put on great performances, mm-hmm. and great matches, 
you know, people were like, okay, uh, really? Or, you know, Charlotte and Bailey, that was kind of like underwhelming as well. But yeah, and now that she's going to challenge Rhea Ripley, I feel like, I feel like, you know, they're going to probably have her win at WrestleMania and talking about Charlotte. It, it's not needed. I, I just feel like it's real unnecessary. Let, let Rhea Ripley have her moment and, don't take that away from her just to, you know, match your dad in terms of title um, possessions. Which that's all this really is. Cause, and which, oh, yeah, look, absolutely. Which, look I, look, I, I'll openly admit right now, and I've said this on, I want to say the 2019 Women's Royal Rumble. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of people that I think are great in WWE in terms of women's wrestling. More, I guess I would say, on the main roster. But mm-hmm. I would put Charlotte in in my five of, like, ones that I think are great. That mm-hmm. being said, like, look, we all know that she wants to do, de- she's supposed to be, they're building her up for 16 times. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because not only because of the, I mean, for, like, it's kind of like, I don't even want a journey. Just fucking do it so it's, to get it over with. So just keep mm-hmm. giving her title back and back, so that way we can move on to some, some another story with her. Right. And it also fits the the unoriginality because even though, as I said, I think in ring wise, I think Charlotte's one of the best in the WWE. She is probably the most unoriginal character in the history of the WWE. Um, you mm-hmm. can listen to full discussion of that on the 2019 Women's Rumble, right, Bill? That's yes. Where we talked about that, where we went in mm-hmm. really depth about. There's nothing original about this woman. So, um, while I'm thinking about it, I have a question for y'all. Yes, okay. Being, I had wanted, I wanted Baszler to win, even though now it probably was too easy. Who, who would have been your pick to win this Rumble? Um, who was your, who was your pick to win? I probably had Baszler because I had heard like the internet rumors, and I didn't, I didn't know too much about Baszler to be honest with you. Um, mm-hmm. So it was, it was probably Baszler, but now after I saw what was possibly the worst elimination chamber in the history of wrestling, <laughs> I oh now God, think yeah. that Charlotte might have been the right one to win here. Um, I had wanted Shayna to win because she had had such a hot streak going into yes. it. She had been the NXT Women's Champion for like a year. She had she'd won the main event match at Survivor Series, and yes. I thought they gotta have her go over for the Rumble. It's, but I think it, you know, with Charlotte going over, it, it's a double edged sword because when you look back now at what happened with the Elimination Chamber, it's like maybe they made the right call because honestly, I I don't see any you know looking at this list, I don't see anybody else that could have won it except for Shayna or Charlotte. And that yeah. and that's with all due respect to, to the other twenty eight women that were in it. No to be right. fair though, to be fair to the to these two women as as far as that goes, if you look back in the history of this podcast even, there's a, a more rumbles that you're like only like three people could win than mm-hmm. there are not. Yeah. Right. So that's not really saying much that like well, I could only have been one of these two because I was like, I feel like that's almost every rumble. <laughs> um, but no, like I said, I, I don't even think, you know, now that we have Shayna versus Becky, I don't even think Shayna wins, to be honest with you. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I have no interest in... I'm definitely more interested in the Charlotte match than I am mm-hmm. with Shayna at all. Yeah. Hell, the Charlotte match is probably the only thing I care about with WrestleMania. Um, well, that's mm. not true. Probably Edge and Orton. That's it. Yeah. Oh, Edge and Orton. All the other things can sure. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, you know, uh, overall, I think um, I think even though Charlotte won, we were kind of like, eh. You know, I don't think it was a bad Rumble. Um, it wasn't loaded with too many. You know legends or whatnot um there was a couple people that returned and you know so i think there, i think there was a lot of good moments but there were some moments that just kind of didn't make sense so you know it wasn't a terrible rumble um i think it could have went went a lot worse for sure 
Um, it was it wasn't that bad overall. It's you know there was some you know mishaps or whatnot, but I guess it could have been a whole lot worse than what what it was. Right. I will say this. So I've seen people that were, and I don't know if maybe they're if they were mad about the match or just mad about the Charlotte win. Because sometimes that's what happens too. If the wrong per- person they don't want to, and they're like, "Oh, the whole match sucks." Um, yeah. I and, and they, I saw a bunch of people calling this like the worst of the three. I don't agree with that. No, not at all. I would say this. I would say the the best one was obviously the first one. Yes. Um, but also, as me and Bill have talked about in that show, we really question that because is it that it was that great or is it because it's the match that had the most returns maybe ever in any Royal Rumble we've seen? Mm-hmm. Bill, what was, do you remember what the count was for that? How many returns were in that? I think we said 10 or 11. Yeah, that's one third of the match. I actually, um, I actually saved a picture from WWE.com of the sta- standoff between Sasha Banks and Trish Stratus, because those are two of my top favorites. Mm-hmm. And I have that as the, um, as my background on my laptop. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the other Royal Rumble, and Royal Rumble means a lot for me in terms of starting to watch and everything. And then that was, you know, and then seeing that, that just kind of was like, I hope that happens one day, please. If you love me, please make it happen. <laughs> um, so, like I said, so I and plus this rumble, in the purposes of this podcast, because I would like to remind everyone, this is an evaluation podcast. There was no ridiculousness or rule changing that got me mad, unlike the previous years, or the right. previous year Royal Rumble, I should say. Wow, I didn't even think about that i mean it's pretty said. it's pretty straightforward is it not yeah very straightforward not like the becky lynch bullshit from last year right and subsequently the, the nia Jax bullshit too i mean both are the same thing it makes you question why do you even draw numbers why don't you just attack number 30 and just be in or attack mm-hmm. a, a higher number and just put right. yourself in um this kind of reinforced that like no, not reinforced but None of that nonsense happened. Do you agree, Bill, or no? No, I agree. I, I definitely agree with that. What were your overall thoughts on this one, Bill? Um, After watching it a second time, I'm going to agree with you, Jim. I think this is not the worst Rumble. Um, I would have it, because I know... The worst women's first, Rumble, we should... You mean. Yeah, the worst women's Rumble. Yeah, thank you. Um. I think I'd have to agree with you after watching it a second time. It's behind the first one. Right. So I would say it's a good rumble for what it is. Yeah. But right. it's not going to be an all-timer. Right. If you're looking at both men and women, yeah, you're right. It's not going to be an all-timer. I agree with you there. But it's solid. There's nothing really for me to get mad about. And I feel like, unfortunately, these days with WWE, that's all I can ask for is to not make me mad about something. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to point out something too you know how they were saying Bianca Belair had the um, most eliminations at 8 and too big to do about it Shayna Baszler also had 8 eliminations really oh yes well you can see where where their minds are pushing and I said I said okay well they gave that to Bianca but Shayna Baszler did the same thing and that's kind of something that just really went unnoticed Mm -hmm. yeah i didn't even i didn't know that at all but you can obviously just by that where their heads are with who's more important so to speak right or with baszler you know it's no surprise but with bianca belair's performance it's like oh yeah she yeah she may you know kind of like that yeah they've got big plans for her oh yeah there this is the mess of one meal. Did I don't know if y'all kind of heard any chatter on social media or anything. There was at one point some um, there was some fans kind of thinking that maybe Bianca Belair may be inserted into the title match at WrestleMania as well, kind of doing the whole WrestleMania twenty thing. 
I've heard Triple Threat that. match. I don't think it would, but no, no, I don't think it'll thought, happen. Some people actually thought that that would happen. I mean, you, you know, if you're watching this Rumble, I, it feels like they're gonna. It feels like Bel Air is set to do something, but then like they kind of, and even they have that thing with Charlotte coming to NXT and. Bel Air attack because we are all NXT, and I was like, okay, maybe she'll get inserted. I mean, I don't know if I'd like it because um, I'm more of a traditionalist that wants just the Royal Rumble of winner, unless there's a really good reason why someone else is in mm-hmm. it. Right, yeah. Like, like to WrestleMania 20, I think it was basically like Shawn Michaels was already kind of fighting Triple H, but Benoit decided yeah. to go and jump to the Raw brand, so okay, that makes sense to and me. And by this point, everybody was just sick of Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Right. Feuding. But also, but it, did, it did make sense from what I can remember. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how you would make Bel Air make sense other than saying, well, she put on a great performance. <laughs> it, it, you know, it, maybe it might be a thing where they don't want Charlotte to lose, but they don't want Ripley to lose either, and you insert that third person to eat the loss. I don't know. Well, originally, yeah. I, I know, Bill, I told you about this. Is um, I don't know if we said it on the air. One thing I thought that they might do. First off, I think the 2020 Royal Rumble should have been 10 Raw, 10 SmackDown, 10 NXT. Yeah. That's what one of them should have been, whether it's the women's or the men's. But my idea was, like, during the – one of them, um, the NXT people would help each other because, overall, it's more important for NXT to show that they're, you know, they're real and that way can um, – they kind can headline like WrestleMania, basically. Kind of like Survivor Series. The what? Kind of like how NXT rallied together in route to Survivor Series last year. Right. Yeah. And it's funny because I thought they were going to do it here for Rumble, but then they kind of did it when Charlotte went on NXT for that episode where Bel Air attacked Charlotte because we are all NXT. I'm like, where was this a couple weeks ago? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, in a way, too, it kind of goes back to every woman for herself. Right. But anyway, so I, and there's one thing else I want to mention about about this one, um, this rumble. So I will say this compared to, and this is kind of a preview to the men's Royal Rumble for the next episode. But at least I didn't feel like this one was phoned in, mm-hmm. like the men's Rumble. So there's my lead in to next the next episode. Um, why don't we give some final plugs and then head out of here? Um, Sarah, why don't you give your final plugs first? Um, about the Rumble itself? Yeah, overall thoughts on the Rumble and your final plugs of, like, where people can find you and all that, because we're heading out now. Okay, okay. Um, well, yeah, now that I've seen it a second time and kind of listened to the both of you in between talking, um, I I have to agree with y'all. Um, this wasn't a terrible Rumble, um... There was a few mishaps, but it could have been a lot worse. Um, we definitely seen a lot worse when it comes to the men's rumble. So I think overall, um, it, it wasn't it wasn't you know great, but it wasn't terrible either. It did it did what it needed to do for the most part. Um, so with that being said, um, I think I think we'll pretty much um, see see the fruits of everybody's labor in the future, especially in terms of Bel Air and even, even Baszler. Cause we all know that she's probably going to dethrone Becky at WrestleMania. So, but, um, I really enjoyed this podcast. I love the idea of looking into the rumble, um, Royal rumble, Royal rumbles. Um, so thank you for having me. And if anyone wants to check out my work, um, I do post all my articles on my Facebook page. And that is facebook.com slash AWV. You could also find me on Instagram at Auntie Twister Zero Eight, A-U-N-T-I-E Twister Zero Eight. All right. Thank you very much. As far as I go, you could follow me. That's podcasting on Instagram and Twitter. That's podcasting.com, and uh, that's about it. Like I said, overall, nothing made me particularly mad other than, you know, probably things that annoy me anyway, 
Um, but again, not the worst women's rumble. Um, that's pretty much it. And no real controversies in regards to the rules. All right, Bill, mm-hmm. let's get out of here. All right. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at House of Bill. You can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Billiam. Uh, check out my podcast, That Wrestling Show, which comes out each and every Friday. Uh, next time Jim and I are on, we are going to discuss the men's 2020 Royal Rumble match. So until then, the women's 2020 Royal Rumble match has been eliminated. <laughs>